videos and we've been getting a lot of subscribers recently things are looking up I must admit we've got the wall Phillips fuel injector to do but first we need an engine I've got a TS1 engine that's been stripped down for now for quite a while probably about six or seven months uh, I've got a new piston for it it's just a matter of rebuilding it all putting it back together so we've got to clean it and other stuff so I better get the thing on the bench, I suppose. Right, this is what's left of my TS1 engine from uh, from last year. As you can see, most of it's already been stripped off, but it is absolutely filthy. I'm going to pull the gearbox out, pull the bearings out, pull everything else off it, and give it a really good clean. fitting was a bit tricky when I put the gearbox in it tended to uh, bite down on the on the first gear on the tree and lock up the gearbox so I had to put a really skinny uh, shim in the back and actually machine off the front top end of the teeth otherwise every time I tightened down my end plate the gearbox just locked up so I had a few things with it, a few issues with it, especially with the gear selector as well. That was really stiff in between gears and you're coming back down the box, it was so stiff that you go from third to second and you'd miss completely miss second and go into neutral. And it was happening all the time. So uh, I've had to dress up the inside of the selector and lots of work to get it to run smoothly. And it's still not 100% there. I'm going to have another little go at it now it's apart and uh, polish up that gear selector track that it runs, that your bearing runs on just so it changes gear smoother and easier. I don't need clunk, clunk, clunk gears. Uh, I need click, 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 click. Nice. Right, as you can see, I'm also running the multi spline shaft from uh, Casa Lambretta or Casa Performance rather. I like these shafts really nice because you can just simply slide the hub off when you need to do any maintenance you don't need a puller uh, and I've had no issues with them whatsoever they've been really good really reliable 
yeah, I'm very, very happy with that. That's a good piece of kit from Casa Lambretta. Uh, hang on, I need some rag to wipe my hands. Back in a bit. Okay, right, oh well. Right, this gasket can come off. That's not going to be used ever again. Hardly. Not much of it. Okay, give that a little wipe out. Right, we've just got the uh, rear hood bearing to take out. Brake shoes and rear hood bearing out. And our main bearings. A little bit more work and then we'll get to cleaning. Okay, that's our bearing out, which is still good condition. Right, happy with that. It's all nice and clean. So there we go. Our T pins seem to be okay. They look to be fairly new, I think. Yeah. Yeah, there's no wear on them at all. Okay. Well, we're almost ready for a, a clean down session. Right, just take off the brake shoes. Let me circle it first. And uh, get a little lever and we'll pull that off. This is a handy little lever. And all it is, is a uh, ground down Allen key. But it's handy for pulling things off. You can get behind things. I use it on my end plate as well. Very handy. Well, there's no oil on the brake shoes, so we didn't have much leakage. It is a little bit damp around here, and around here you can see there is some oil escaping, and I think it's from the inside of the bearing where you've got no seal. So when I refit this bearing, I'll refit it with a little bit of sealant on it as well to stop any more leakage around there.
that looks like it's been leaking some oil around the back of the around the back of the uh, around the back of the gasket as well because that's all wet that's not good <laughs> well, it was due a very good turn down thing is this engine's been running Spain thrashed to the limit and in really really hot temperatures like 40 degrees some days so I was expecting a lot of uh, wear and tear on this when it, when it come apart. It gets so hot with expanding and contracting and stuff that you're going to get some uh, you're going to get some oil leaks. <laughs> it's just not normal the amount of heat we get here. Not normal at all. I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me Meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. casings and they are probably one of the worst set of Indian casings I've ever seen they're so rough the casting on them it's unbelievably bad I've spent ages trying to clean them up but it's just impossible to try and make bad casings look good it's Indian really are these this set really was a really tail end of the uh, the queue when it come to uh, getting a good job so, unfortunately, they were all I could find at the time. So, uh, that was it. I had to accept it. Right, here's my barrel, my TS1 barrel. I've just dropped it on here because it just makes it easier to work on. We're going to whip off this, uh, let's get a ratchet. Reed block, because this has been on forever and it's a bit dubiously sealed as well. So, we're going to make a better job of this. It's all going to be cleaned up. 
That feels a bit tight actually. Like it's been bottomed out or something. Oh, the thread's all right. We'll soon see when it comes out or it's in the lock tight. Let's have a look. I've got a lot of cleaning to do. I've got my head to clean up, which is in a dreadful state. That's just the way it just came off. Uh, you can see how hot it got by all this uh, dark brown, brown burning of the Loctite that I used on it. But uh, yeah, it's a radial head by uh, Castle Lambretta. Right, I need an Allen key now. Okay, that's uh, pretty glued on. Let's get a little something to lever it off with. And out it comes. As you can see, we've got V-Force 4 re-block in here. It's the V-Force 4, which we had to extensively modify to get it to fit in. So that gasket's now dead. I'm gonna have to make a new gasket for it. But yeah, I had to uh, basically machine away a lot of this plastic on the reed block here to get it to fit into the TS1. So now this is a part, uh, we can have another go at cleaning all this up better and making a better job of it. Gonna be a bit more attentive to stuff on this next rebuild. Okay, that's our uh, reed block out. And it's not matched to the uh, manifold either, so that's something else we'll be doing. It's uh, pretty well on there, isn't it? Let's just see if we can persuade it off. No, it doesn't want to move. It's got to move. Wow, that's on there, isn't it? Well, I didn't want that to come apart, did I? Anyway, I've got lots and lots of cleaning up to do of gasket surfaces and the barrel needs degreasing and all cleaning, the head needs degreasing and all cleaning. So, um, we're not going to go very far with this build in this condition. So what we'll do is, I'll get this all cleaned up and then in the next episode, it'll be all nice and clean and all ready to go together with all the necessary parts. At the moment, I was just a bit keen to strip it down and have a look. So anyway, we're gonna get some new studs as well, new seals, new bearings, new crank, and it's all going back together with the new piston. I'll show you. Already got the piston for it. Brand new YCCO to go in. That's going to be modified a little as well. It'll all be in other episodes. So don't forget to tune back. Okay, so um, I've got lots and lots of cleaning to do and I'm sure that you don't want to get bored with watching me do that. So I'm going to get this all sorted and ready to go back together for the next episode. So I'll see you all later. Bye for now.